in your art studio, we're going to learn about the proportions of a human face. We'll learn where the eyes are placed, how to figure out where to put the nose and mouth, and we'll experiment with some ways of doing hair, ears, and a couple of fun expressions if we have time. Have fun! Okay, here we go. A portrait, we want to hold your paper vertically. On computers it's called portrait when it's vertical and landscape when it's horizontal. So yes, portrait, great. Start by creating the shape of a head. And remember, this is a generic one, meaning that after this as a practice, we would look at a real person or a photograph of a person to try to create a likeness to that person while also following these guidelines. So the human head tends to be larger at the top and taper in a bit for the chin. And don't worry if it's not perfect. Okay, now rule number one. Where do we put the eyes? The eyes are often placed here accidentally because people think that the eyes are higher up than they are. Do not place the eyes here. The eyes actually go halfway down. So if we have here is the top, here is the chin, halfway down, is about here. I'm going to measure with my pencil to make sure it's the same. It's not. <laughs> okay, that'll be better. Okay. Once I know where halfway is, I'm going to create a guideline for the eyes. And it curves a little bit. That's because the face is round and that the roundness of the head is shown better when we curve the line a little bit. All right, now, so if the eyes go that far down, how do we divide that line up to know where the eyes go? First, I'm going to write that it's halfway down for the eyes. Then, you want to divide that space into five areas that are equal or similar. Really close to equal if they're not. I always just start by kind of eyeballing it. You want the width of an eye in the middle because that's the size of the widest part of the nose. Like down lower, you want the nose to be that wide. Then that would be one eye, and that would be the other. Now, I use my pencil and my fingers to pinch the size of that space and make sure it's the same or close. And it is, with the edges being a little bit smaller, uh, which is fine. As long as they're the same, you don't want them to be different sizes. So five eyes across, meaning that you have the size of an eye five times. One, two, three, four, five. The next thing we're going to do is determine where the lowest part of the nose will go. And that is, again, halfway between the eye line and the chin. So between the eye line and the chin, halfway. 
check our sizes. Okay, good. I did, I did well that time. And bring it in. So, about there is the lowest part of the nose. And then that would be the outside. Very light guidelines, so I can erase them later. Okay, and then the mouth, again, with halfway. Half for the nose. Eyes. Okay, so the mouth, about halfway between the lowest part and the chin. Again. And that is where the lips meet. So you'll have your top lip above that mark and your bottom lip below that mark. And then you might adjust for the chin. Once I have my guidelines set out, I'll begin by drawing the eyes. What I start with personally is the tear duct on each side. Just a little bit of its own shape. And working on them both eyes together, like building up this one and that one, one line at a time, is really helpful in getting the eyes to look the same, to be symmetrical. If you do an entire eye first and then try to match the other one, that is a lot more challenging than if you just do them at the same time. So first, I would create the upper eyelid shape, stopping at this line here. Then the lower eyelid. Okay, next, the iris. That is the colored part of the eye. The brown, the green, the blue, gray, whatever color it is. The iris is a perfect circle. People don't realize that and create it as the wrong shape all the time. Okay. So it is round but part of it is covered by the top eyelid. So you don't see all of it, but it is actually a circle. And the whites of the eye are smaller than we usually interpret them as. So the bottom of the circle usually rests on the lower eyelid and the top of the circle is above the top eyelid and we don't see it. Remember, on both sides. Circle with the top going above the top eyelid. Oops. <laughs> All right. Now the pupil. The pupil is the black part that is inside of the iris, which has color. The pupil is also a circle. And it is centered within the iris. So what that means is that the pupil, if it is centered in the iris, we have to remember the part that's covered. So the pupil is like this, and it appears closer to the top eyelid than the bottom, but that's just because part of the iris is covered by the top eyelid. Okay, at this point I would erase the guideline for the eye, for the eyes.
and just draw back in the stuff that I erased. Okay, next. I always take a moment to shade in the pupil and the iris because as a line drawing they tend to look a little creepy and honestly that is the only reason that I do this at this point in the drawing and I fill it in knowing that I might go back and fix it later and then the iris and we'll focus more on this in the next lesson which is only about eyes the coloration of the iris tends to come from the center and work its way out like the spokes of a bicycle tire that's called radial symmetry so when you shade in the iris go in this direction from the pupil out to the edge of the iris if you're if the eyes you're drawing are light like light blue gray eyes keep them light if your eyes are darker or the eyes you are drawing are darker make it darker Next for the eyes are the eyelashes. For the lashes, you want to have them going in the direction toward the outside of the face on both sides. And with lashes too, you wanna to get this sort of swoop action happening where they can overlap a little bit. That small action of having the first one and then the second one overlap and then the following, that creates a very realistic look because that's what eyelashes actually do if you were to you know grab a mirror and look at them up really close but from a straight on pose like this straight at the center so from the edge toward the outside like toward the ear which will be here down and then flick your pencil upward Then as they get toward the top of the eye, they go up. Then there are fewer of them toward the nose. And I always go back over a couple of times because that makes them look layered and varied in size, which they are in reality. And then the bottom lashes are also going toward the outside of the face, but they're shorter and they're fewer. And then they also turn a little bit toward the inside by then. Okay, I also make a little line here to show where the tear duct flesh turns into the white of the eye. Give it a little shading. And next, eyebrows. Now the hairline, I guess we should talk about that too. Approximately, again, halfway between the top of the head in the middle hair line the hairline 
is approximately here and of course it depends on the person and the hairstyle but generally speaking the hair will do something like this and let's say if you have a short haircut and you're lined up you may have a more obvious hairline something like that so I did two different ones on each side the right hair side is more like if your hair were longer and sort of flowing and then this side if it were a short cut and either pushed upward or so short that it just grew very slightly and then the eyebrow is about halfway between the hairline and the eyes so approximately there and the first thing you want to do is develop the shape or the direction rather of the eyebrow and again both of them together And then you go back in and you add the hairs that make up the eyebrow. I always start at the middle toward the nose and I'll go, sometimes they go upward and a little bit the other direction. And then you want to carefully create the hairs of the eyebrow. And then there's a little bit of a fold on some people's eyes right above here where the eyelid folds back underneath itself when the eyes are open. If you have that, go ahead and add it in. Or if you're not looking in a mirror or at a photo, just go ahead and add it in. All right, then the nose. And this represents the lowest part of the nose, which has all different shapes, but usually something like that, whether it's thinner here or thicker. And this bottom shape comes up and turns into a nostril. And these guidelines, which are at the tear duct, come straight down and that's the edge, like the widest part of the nose aligns with the tear duct. And then of course later when you're looking at a photo, you'll want to really inspect the distance here because some noses are wider, some are less so, but all about average line up with the tear duct. So then you wanna add the flesh of the nose like this. This part here, I just let fade off because you get the bridge of the nose to show up with shading, not with lines. And then here it sort of transitions back into your face and isn't so obvious. Again, it's a lot of shading. 